Hello guys, today I'm back looking at the W190 uh, loader and since the 3D printed parts for the Kane Soil trailer worked out so well I think what I'll do today is try and 3D print a few parts that might help me with this build so the first thing, probably most obvious thing is the cover for the motor on the rear of the model here so I'm going to get that done today for sure the next thing I'll try and do is print a piece that will connect to this a circular mounting post here and fit around the motor to stop it twisting like this so that will make the steering a little bit better so I'm pretty sure I can get those two things done today and the next thing I'll try and do is I've decided to mount the motor on the front of the model so I'm going to put the second motor on the front so I need to cut out a piece of this and somehow make a plastic cover that incorporates part of this I'm not sure if I'll get round to doing the front uh, motor cover today. Um, it kind of depends how long it takes to do this and uh, the one for the steering because uh, the 3D prints tend to take quite a long time so uh, redesigning pieces can take a long time so I might run out of time but uh, I'll see how I get on. Hopefully we'll get to mounting the front motor today. So here's the part I printed, I'm not sure if you can see it on the uh, camera there but this hole here is a kind of a beveled hole and it fits into this uh, mountain post here for the bolts because it's uh, narrower at one end and wider at the top here. So this should fit on like that and that seems to fit on fine so those dimensions are perfect, nothing to worry about there. So here's the motor and you can see width wise we're just about fine but lengthwise it's a little bit too small and what that means is that I can't get the motor in here so what I'm going to do is widen these dimensions and print it again I'll not bother showing you that because the print is basically going to look identical to the print that you just watched so no point re-recording that when I do get the dimensions right on this which I'm pretty sure it'll only take one more print so that's another uh, 20 minutes to print another one of these uh, that motor will fit in there fine but that doesn't necessarily mean that the rest of the dimensions are perfectly right so I might get this fitting in here and then find that the motor isn't lined up properly with the hole that we previously made in the top of the model here so we we'll have to just print out another few and then see what way it's fitting after that
this is the cover we just printed for the rear motor you can see these parts where you have a kind of an overhang they're kind of tricky to print so that's why I have all these little pieces sticking out here that's so that when the printer went to go across all of this that it had something to stick the plastic to because you can't um, print a ledge out here you know the, the printer can't just print over empty space you have to have something to support this uh, this lip here this layer so that was one tricky thing with it and as a result these should have been holes but because uh, the first layer was so rough because it was basically printed over nothing the holes are filled in but because of the top layer you should be able to just drill through those no problem um, it's the right dimensions for the motor the wires are supposed to stick out here and it goes in and it clicks in here I've broken this little piece here but it's not too bad it seems to be a really good fit for the motor so that's pretty perfect and when we hold it up to the rear of the model you can see it fits down there pretty perfectly I have these little ledges here to stop the motor going sideways so now the motors well the motor should be perfectly centered on the model I just need to drill the holes here 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 and here and tap them to M2 and then I should be able to just screw that on and that'll be that done oh I need to drill a hole for the wires as well so the wires are probably gonna go through there Okay, I've drilled the holes to 1.6 millimeters. So next thing to do is to tap the holes. This is a little tricky to do around the camera, as most things are. So I'm just going to tap them, and we'll just skip ahead to after they're tapped. I'm not going to get time to modify the front end uh, today so what I'm going to do is just put the parts together and see how how it all lines up and test out the motor that I just mounted here so I have some wires that I just added on temporarily here and hopefully we'll be able to get this to all fit back together yeah that looks to be working fine Just need to get the screw now. And that's the two pieces that we've printed in here in place, all tightly screwed in with tires here, so There's our wheels in place. So you can see the printed piece uh, past the wheels, but it doesn't it doesn't look too bad. It's not standing out too much. The one on the front will stand out a lot more. There's nothing I can do about it really if I want that um that cover over the motor on the front. So I'll just have to get this colour of paint and uh, spray the pieces. Hopefully that'll uh, make them less obvious. Okay, well here's the motor. I have it hooked up to the power supply so I'll just up the voltage here and we should start to get it rolling so not too much trouble it has that's only at 1.2 volts so it's able to drive on there So 
So as you can see, without uh, too high of a voltage, the motor has no problem pushing the model on its own. Hopefully when we add the second motor we should have enough power to push into gravel to get a good load in the bucket. That's the drive motor, so let's take a look at the steering motor. What, what will it take to get this model to steer? Now, the problem with this obviously is that we have the locked axles which are very hard to push, so it's probably going to be pretty difficult to get this to actually uh, move. I'm not even sure if the power supply in this setting will have enough to steer it. What does? Okay. So about three. Let's see what setting I'm on here. I see. Let's see so. So at about 3 volts it looks to be using around about 100 milliamps. I'll just turn it up again and we'll go the other direction. It's 125 milliamps, about 150 there, and about around about 4 volts we'll say is what it was at. So it's not taking a huge amount to steer this motor. Which is pretty good. Now it's missing all the weight of the bucket and the uh, the cab, well actually the cab's plastic so that doesn't weigh too much, but the weight of the bucket would be substantial over these front wheels and without uh, the model moving it would be pretty hard to push that around. So I'll just put it to 3.3 volts as an example, that'll be common enough. Uh, that's 3.3 volts there and it's struggling. So let's try 5 volts. So at 5 volts the motor has no problem spinning the there's no problem turning the model as it is. So hopefully when I get this uh, so hopefully when I get the final model together including the bucket and all the motors that are going to be weighed over the front wheels hopefully 5 volts will be able to spin the the model then. Now on this wood it could be a bit easier to turn the model because the wheels slip on this but if we're on sandpaper or something like that, it'd be a lot harder to turn the model like this. So you probably need to be driving forward when you're steering. Or maybe I'll write it into the code so that you can only steer when the motors are driving. Uh, even if it's only slightly, because uh, that would take a huge load off the steering motor. And would only look at it last a lot longer. While I was doing the 3D printing, I've been thinking that this little joint here where the N20 motor connects to the front of the model, I think I might cut a section out of this and replace it with a 3D printed piece that perfectly fits the D-shaft of the N20 motor because um, I can already see that this is starting to wear the metal or the die cast around the hole and inside it is starting to wear slightly just from the little piece of uh, movement that the N20 motor has been doing but if I replace that with a 3D printed piece it won't last as long as the die cast but I can replace it really quickly I can just print like 10 replacement pieces and have them ready whenever I need them and uh, just screw it out just screw off the bottom piece uh, take out this screw and screw in the new plastic piece if I do that I can do it really quickly. I'll also then be able to adjust the adjust the angle at the minute this model and I think with its original mounting point it was kind of bowed in the middle. It's hard to see but um, you'd notice it when you're looking at it that the, this front half of the model is going down at an angle and this piece is facing down at an angle towards the junction here. So I might be able to uh, move the the pivot point on the top back a little bit and straighten up the, the bottom of the model which uh, would just make it look a little bit better but that's just another thing I think I might have a look at so that's all I'm going to have time for this weekend if you liked that video um, make sure and hit the like button and if you have any questions you can post them below or post them in the forum and I'll try and answer them if you want to see the next steps in this build make sure and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out when that's updated and that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching